Welcome to IAS project. In this video, we will be talking about the ornaments and jewelry as well as the weapons that were used during Harappan culture. Before we go into the lecture, let me ask you a question. Consider the below statements regarding Indus civilization. Two statements have been given here and the question is which of the above statements are correct? The first statement is Chanhudaro is a settlement known for bead making. The second statement is Nageshwar is a settlement known for shell crafts. If you know the answer to this question, please answer in the comment section. This is a medium level question in terms of UPSC prelims exam. If we talk about Harappan art, we have already completed these topics in our previous videos. Now let us talk about jewelry, ornaments and beads that were made in Harappan culture as well as metal weapons that were used by Harappan people. Let's see what kind of ornaments and jewelry Harappan people made. Harappan people made bangles, bracelets, pendants, girdles and anklets as well as ear rings and finger rings. Most of these ornaments or jewelry were worn by women. However, some of these ornaments and jewelry were also sometimes worn by men. During Harappan civilization, bead making was highly specialized. What are beads? You can see beads in this picture. Beads are usually cylindrical in shape or sometimes they are spherical in shape. Moreover, through the center of the bead, a hole is drilled. So after the hole is drilled through the center of the bead, a thread is passed like this. Now by collecting so many number of beads on this thread, we can simply make a bead necklace. For example, this is basically a bead necklace. And such kind of bead necklaces were generally worn by women. However, sometimes men also wore beads. So that is why we can say during the Harappan civilization, both men as well as women wore beads. If we talk about bead making, we must also remember two Harappan settlements that are very important from the point of view of bead making. Because both of these settlements had what are known as bead making factories. Bead making factories are nothing but those places where beads were made in mass production. Even if you forget Lothal, please do not forget Chanhudaro from the point of view of bead making factories. Because Chanhudaro in Pakistan is the most important Harappan settlement from the point of view of bead making factories. Both these sites, Chanhudaro in Pakistan as well as Lothal in Gujarat exported beads. They exported beads to other Harappan cities as well as to Mesopotamia. If we talk about Harappan people, Harappan people were very fond of cosmetics. So, cosmetics were very widely used in Harappan culture. Sometimes, Harappans also wore seals across their neck as amulets. What is an amulet? Amulet is basically a locket kind of thing which is generally believed to have some magical powers. For example, even today some people wear amulets mainly for the purpose of let's say Nazar Hatana like driving the spirits away or uh, preventing bad from happening and all these. So Harappan people also wore amulets. What did they wear as amulets? They mainly wore their seals as amulets. However, we know that the primary purpose of seals was not to wear them as amulets. The primary purpose of seals was to mark and identify the goods. So we can say that the primary purpose of the seals was not from the point of view of some magical element, but it was used in trade. So in this picture, you can see different kinds of beads and in this picture, you can see two copper bangles. Now the question is, which materials did Harappans used to make ornaments? Harappans mainly made their ornaments and jewelry using gold, silver, copper, bronze and lead. So these are basically the five metals that were used to make ornaments and jewelry. Other than metals, they also used faience, terracotta, shell, ivory as well as semi-precious stones. So all these remaining, they are not metals. We have already talked about terracotta. Terracotta is nothing but fire baked clay. And we get shells from mollusks or we can call them as shellfish. So Harappan sites which were very near to coast mainly had shell making industries. We get ivory from elephant tusks. We know that in the forests near Indus region, Elephants were also there along with rhinos, buffaloes and other animals. So Harappans also easily got ivory. 
However, semi-precious stones were not easily available. So, they mostly imported semi-precious stones from Gujarat, Afghanistan and other locations like Iran. So, the only thing that is left over here to discuss is faience. We will discuss about faience in next slide. You can see some of the bead ornaments in this picture. Beads were mainly used to make bead necklaces. Beads were not only made from gold, copper, silver, bronze, lead and other items, but they were also made from semi-precious stones. For example, if we talk about semi-precious stone jewellery, then beads were mainly made of carnelian. You can see carnelian beads in this picture. Beads were also made of jasper, crystal, quartz as well as teatite. Let me ask you two general knowledge questions. The first question is, what is the difference between precious stone and semi-precious stone? And the second question is, I will give you some examples of stones. You have to tell me which of them are precious stones. For example, diamond, ruby, sapphire and emerald. So I have given you four gemstones here. You have to tell me which of these four gemstones are precious stones and which of these four gemstones are semi-precious stones. So please answer both these questions in the comment section. Whichever is the best answer, I will pin it in the comment section. Please answer in less than 30 or 40 words. We also know that Harappans also buried some of their precious jewellery along with the dead people. Other than precious jewellery, they also buried pottery. Sometimes copper and bronze items also. We have already discussed this in pottery video. During Harappan civilization, gold was very rare. That is why it was considered as precious. Moreover, almost all the gold jewellery that we have found from Harappan settlements, we have only found from hoards. Hoards are basically a group of precious items that were buried in the ground for the purposes of safekeeping. However, those people who buried these hoards in the ground, they died long ago and now we are finding them. When hoards are buried, it is also called as cash. Now, let's talk about fines. You have to remember that fines is not naturally available in the environment. It is artificially produced material. If you want to make fines, what you do is, first you take sand and some quartz powder. And then you mix this sand or quartz powder with gum. After mixing it with gum, you will get a paste kind of material. Once you get this paste kind of material, you make it into desired shape. For example, let's say you want to make it into the shape of a bird. So, you have made a bird using the paste that you got from mixing gum and sand. After making this bird, what you do is, you glaze it in fire. Glazing is nothing but heating in fire. Once you heat it at sufficient temperatures, you will get fines. What will happen is, this bird will get shiny and glassy surface or shiny and glassy appearance. And moreover, it will also harden and it will get rigid. Now this final rigid object is simply called as fines. So I hope you understood what fines is. Harappan people used fines to make ornaments. For example, they made beads, bangles, earrings and other ornaments using fines. Moreover, they also made tiny vessels. For example, like decorative items. We have talked about miniature pottery earlier. So fines, tiny vessels were more or less similar to miniature pottery from the point of view of their usage because miniature pottery was mainly used as toys or let's say for the purpose of decorative items. Similarly, fines tiny vessels were also mainly used from the purpose of decorative items. Moreover, Harappans also made spindle walls using fines. You can see spindle walls picture here. Spindle walls were mainly used for spinning cotton and wool. So by spinning cotton and wool using spindle walls, they made cotton and wool thread or you can call it as cotton and wool yarn. So this was the purpose of spindle walls. Even today, some tribal people in India still use spindle walls. You don't need to know how spindle walls were exactly used, but please remember that spindle walls were mainly used to spin cotton and wool so that they can make thread and yarn. Moreover, just like gold, fines items were also considered as luxury items. That is why poor people or rural people did not have fines items. So during excavations, we found most of the fines items from large cities like Harappa, Mohenjadaro, Rakhigadi and other big cities, not in the small settlements. 
So we can see that fine items are very rare in smaller settlements of Harappan culture or Harappan civilization. In this picture, you can see a faience ram amulet. Ram is nothing but a sheep. And amulet, as I have told you, it is basically like a locket which is worn around neck. So they made a hole in this faience ram and they put a thread through here and they wore it around their neck. Moreover, in this picture, you can see that the surface is smooth and shiny because faience is shiny and glassy. We know that Harappans buried jewellery and ornaments along with their dead people. During excavations, we have found that jewellery, copper mirrors and precious stones were buried both with men as well as women dead bodies. Now let's look at some of the important Harappan sites and their associated raw materials and arts and crafts. For example, in Nageshwar as well as Balakot, shell crafts, bangle making and ladle making was very famous. Ladle is basically a kind of spoon. You can see Nageshwar here. So Nageshwar is basically located at the tip of the Khatiawad Peninsula. Or you can say that Nageshwar is located near Gulf of Kutch. This is nothing but Gulf of Kutch. So Nageshwar is in Gujarat but Balakot is in Pakistan. Both Balakot as well as Nageshwar are located near to the coast. That is why shells were easily available in these locations. So this is the important reason that both Nageshwar as well as Balakot had shell making industries or shell craft industries. If we talk about bead making, Chanhudaro in Pakistan is the most famous site for bead making industries. In case of India, we also have Lothal in Gujarat which is also famous for bead making. You can see Chanhudaro over here in Pakistan. And Lothal is over here. Lothal is very near to Gulf of Khambat or Gulf of Kambi. In Afghanistan, we know that there was a Harappan trading outpost called as Shotugai. From Shotugai, Harappan cities got lapis lazuli. So we can say that Shotugai provided the raw material of lapis lazuli stone for Harappan cities. Lapis lazuli is basically a blue colored metamorphic rock. And lapis lazuli is also considered as semi-precious stone. If we talk about carnelian crafts, then Lothal as well as Bharuch in Gujarat are very very famous. Carnelian is nothing but a brownish red stone. We have seen carnelian beads in this lecture. Let me show them to you once again. These are nothing but carnelian beads. They are brownish red in color. Lothal is over here and Bharuch is over here. Harappan cities got their copper from Khetri copper mines in Rajasthan and they were supplied this copper by Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture people. Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture is basically a Chalcolithic culture that supplied copper to Harappan cities. If we talk about gold, then Harappans got gold from Kolar mines which are located in Karnataka. I hope you saw KGF movie. What is the full form of KGF? Kolar gold fields. And Kolar mines or Kolar gold fields are located in Karnataka. Now let's talk about Harappan metal weapons. The most important thing that you have to understand about Harappan metal weapons is Harappan weapons were not technologically good compared to Mesopotamian weapons. In fact, we can say that Harappans were very very poor in making metal weapons. However, they still made some metal weapons. For example, they made metal axes metal spearheads, metal daggers and knives, metal bows and arrowheads. They mainly used copper as well as bronze for making all these metal weapons. However, we can say that copper and bronze weapons were actually very very rare in Harappan culture. So the number of copper and bronze weapons that we found so far from Harappan settlements are actually very very less. So not only are the number of weapons less, but also the Harappan metal weapon technology was also technically not so good. For example, if you want to know particularly, Harappan knives as well as Harappan blades did not have the strengthening midrib. And this kind of strengthening midrib actually gives strength to the knife. Without this strengthening midrib, these knives cannot be used properly. They can be simply used as a blade, but not as a strong knife. However, the strengthening midrib was present in Mesopotamian weapons. So that is why we can say that Harappan weapons were very inferior compared to Mesopotamian metal weapons. 
So this is one of the reason why the Harappan culture declined. Because when the invaders came from the west with their superior weapons, Harappan people were unable to defend themselves properly. Because Harappan people did not have very good weapons. So we consider this as one of the important factors for the decline of Harappan civilization as a overall. However, Harappans made one technological advancement from the point of view of metal weapons or metal tools. That was nothing but saw with undulating teeth. So Harappan saw with undulating teeth was technologically very advanced or technologically very superior compared to the other Bronze Age cultures. Saw with undulating teeth is something like this. So I hope you could understand from here. This is basically a saw which is used to cut wood. So because of the invention of saw with undulating teeth, Harappans became very good carpenters. So basically we can say that this is a single exception in case of Harappan weapons and Harappan metal tools. Other than the saw with undulating teeth, the remaining Harappan weapons were very very inferior compared to the Mesopotamian weapons. If you like this video, please subscribe. You can download this presentation from our telegram channel which is IAS project. You can find the link for this channel in the description section below. Thank you.